Now you'd think that from watching Gardening Australia, growing healthy plants is all about good soil, adding a little bit of compost, a dash of water and sunshine, and giving it a good stir. Yes, that's true, but the pathways into gardening are many and varied. And today, I'm going to introduce you to a couple who are using not so traditional methods. Hello. Hey, welcome. Thank welcome you. To good to see you. Good welcome you. Come on in. Come on in. Thank you. So, Tammy, this is our dining room slash hydroponics test space, I suppose. This is amazing! Nige Reynard and Alicia Kian are growers with a flair for the extraordinary. They've brought a touch of the tropics to their little slice of suburbia in southwest Sydney. This is just one of your tents. Yeah, there's another one here. Wow! So, this is all growing without any soil? That's correct. Everything in here is hydroponic and automated. This is all flourishing. Yeah, it's to be our lounge room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to pull up a chair and take a seat in here. <laughs> but there's more to our place as well. Filling the inside of the home and spilling out into the yeah, greenhouses at the back, the couple are growing wild and wonderful tropical plants powered by hydroponic systems. The jungle's inside and... What would you call this outside? More jungle. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how did you two meet? Well, we met on Instagram as uh, individually very plant-obsessed <laughs> collectors and growers. And then we got uh, plant swapping and then started to, you know, be friends and was friends for a while. Yeah, before. Built a friendship, slowly evolved over time. Alicia has a background in science and research. And Nige is technically minded. I do most of the infrastructural building of systems, maintaining of systems. I sort of focus mostly on genetics and breeding Ooh. and then experimenting with making hybrids. It's a great team you guys make. So can you tell me more about what you guys do now? This is predominantly a large collection of plants we look after and we've had to incorporate a business aspect to it to allow us to spend our full-time work life looking after plants. Who are your customers? It seems like there is avid collectors around Australia who are really interested in the quirky or the collectible unique kind of hybrids that we create and they also in turn share with us their growing of our hybrids in different environments, hydro, non-hydro. Oh, that's fabulous. All your plants, you package them in, in boxes and ship them off to wherever they need to be? Yes, very modern way for plants to be uprooted and then to travel and see the world, right? The tropical foliage that's captured Alicia and Niger's and everyone's attention are the plants in the arrowed family. In particular, they love anthuriums and philodendrons. So what is it about arrowids that you guys love? Ah, I love large foliage. I love tall growing plants, big leaves, juicy green is my favourite sort of thing. For me, I love anthuriums. I love all the different textures that they have, maybe you know, when you're obsessed with something, you can sort of spot all the differences and there's just such diversity. So many aroids like anthuriums and philodendrons, they love a free draining mix. And that's what they're traditionally grown in, like chunky orchid bark or perlite. Why does growing philodendrons and anthuriums suit hydroponics so well? Well, many species suit hydroponics, but particularly a lot of the aroids we grow come from jungles where they're epiphytes, and so they're growing on bark naturally without needing soil. And we can mimic the natural occurrence of a very strong wet and dry cycle. Powering the majority of the plants in their collection is what's called the flood and drain hydroponic system. And inside, there's an example of how it works. This one is normally on a timer, but I'll override it with an app on the phone that we have connected to show you how it operates. Firstly, there's a aquarium pump in the reservoir below. The reservoir's holding nutrient solution. The pump forces water up through this little drainage port here. The tray fills up to a predetermined height. Is there nutrients that you have to add to it or...? Yes, when we initiate the system, which is once a month, we add nutrients and a bit of pH adjusting chemical to create the perfect nutrient and pH balance. Yep. And then that all feeds up and sits there for about a couple of minutes. Yep. And then once that's all done, it will just flow back into Close the Close back water. down, the pot's empty out. Gotcha, so there will be no water left in there? Like it's... No, that's, that's what we're aiming for, to have absolutely zero water left in there so that the roots aren't sitting in, in puddles. And how often do you have to run this cycle? 
We're running this tray five times a day for five minutes, and we just run it during the daylight hours. And what are the plants all growing in? So these are all growing in an expanded clay aggregate. It's circular clay balls, essentially fired rock hard. They have a very high amount of drainage, so they hold moisture inside them, but they allow any moisture that's held between the balls to just release and allow air into the root zone. That's really cool. So that system is flood and drain. What have we got here? So this is an experimental system. Uh, down the bottom, we have essentially a deep water culture hydroponics setup, but it also includes a large pump, which pumps the nutrient solution up to the top of the clay ball filled poles irrigating the aerial roots of the climbing plants. The plants on these poles have also put roots down into that water reservoir at the base and are living in and amongst the aerated water down there. We keep the reservoir highly oxygenated and highly aerated because it's very important in a deep water culture system to supply extra oxygen to the roots. Ah, so would we end up with then rot or something if they were sitting in? Yes, that's the main concern with hydroponics is keeping the rot at bay. And how have you made this system? The unit itself is cobbled together from a bunch of different parts. The overall frame of it is an industrial shelving system. All the plumbing and stuff is available at local hardware stores and it's quite easy to come by. And tell me about the lights that you're using in this system. They're just simple floodlights, nothing too fancy about them, 30 watt floodlights. And what have you got growing here? Uh, the main plant that's growing in here is Philodendron glorious, which has gotten huge in this system and we've had to cut it back a few times. We also have an old Epipremnum mandula, which has recently been beheaded because it got to the very ceiling of the house. So all these philodendrons and the epipremnum, they love to climb. Are they regularly hitting the ceiling? It happens very quickly and very regularly. <laughs> it's a constant problem. In fact, we try and keep this one a little bit underlit to stop it from just exploding through the top of the system. And the hydroponic heart of this operation is out of this world. I feel like I'm in a spaceship. There are some similarities to a spaceship. This is basically a fully sealed envelope within the lounge room of our house. It's climate controlled and the walls are essentially a non-permeable membrane that keeps all the humidity locked into this space. And the air within this tent is exchanged with the air outside of the house. So we have absolute control over the airflow without flooding our house with humidity. Brilliant. And do you leave these lights on 24 seven? These lights are on 14 hours on, 10 hours off. The plants need to absolutely have a rest period as part of their photosynthesis cycle. These are horticultural specific grow lights. This has a full spectrum of light, including ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths. It brings out more color, it brings out better health on the plant. What have you got growing in these greenhouses? Well, that house has got all our parent plants and this one's filled with seedlings of hybrids that we created. What started out as a hobby for Nige and Alicia has flourished into a full-time obsession. Creating new hybrids using the plants in their collection is a big focus. So how does all the hydroponics help with what you're trying to achieve with hybridising? For me, you know, hydroponics provide the optimum condition for plants to go through more life cycles more quickly. They reach maturity faster, they flower more, and therefore have more opportunities to create more hybrids, which is like nature's artwork, right? <laughs> so you've got all the hybrids in here. Yeah. So a hybrid is created when there's a cross between two genetically different parents. The parents could be the same species, but slightly different variation, colour and size or they could be completely different species, which is what you guys are doing here, creating completely new plants, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What we want to do is create a bigger gene pool, but also when you mix species or just different parents of the same species, you get more variation for different sizes, leaf colour, shapes. If it hasn't been done before, we want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so can you cross any um, anthurium with any other? Oh, I wish. What happens is a big part of what crosses with what is dependent on their genetics. Mm. Also, what researchers have found and we're finding is if they're from similar region, they're also more likely to cross. It's really still trial and error though, which is part of the fun and the experimentation, right? Well, the experimentation is going really well. <laughs> Thank you, it's so encouraging. <laughs> so Alicia, to create a lot of these wonderful hybrids, I'm guessing you spend a lot of time with flowers and pollinating. 
I do. All right, let's go. We're heading indoors to the grow tent to where the action happens. And to cross one anthurium with another, it can be a little tricky as they have quite complex flowers. So most people would probably think this whole thing is a flower, but what are the parts? So an inflorescence isn't a single flower, but it's actually a cluster of many, many, many flowers along this long thing called a spadix. You can probably see it all better on this particular yeah. inflorescence. You can see that there are lots of little diamonds and each diamond is a complete flower, which has both female and male parts, but they don't happen at the same time. Ah. First, it goes through the female phase, which is all wet and sticky. That's when it's receptive. Only after a few days when it's no longer receptive, it will go through the male phase right after that and produce pollen. Right. So they don't happen at the same time. Ah, and why is it important that they don't happen at the same time? So by having the phases separately, the flower usually cannot pollinate itself. Most anthuriums and plants for sexual reproduction, they want to swap genes with another party. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Alicia, how do you go about crossing anthuriums? So with the anthuriums at the male phase, I will get a brush and collect the pollen into tin foil. Then I will put it in a Ziploc bag, label it, date it, and freeze it into our sperm bank. And then when I notice a plant is ready in the female stage, I will go to our sperm bank freezer and choose a suitable mating partner. And then I will hand pollinate it again with a brush. If I were to try this at home, how do I know if pollination was successful? Ah, so it will start to get bumpy and green where the sticky wet st droplets were and then become a berry and you can see them here and here. And how do you know when they're ready for harvesting? They literally just pop out of the spadix and you can see that they're dangling and hanging by a little filament like an umbilical cord. So once we've harvested the seeds, we clean them, select the best ones, and then we germinate them in wet paper towel like this. Then they're ready to be planted in a series of mini greenhouses, which are temperature controlled. Mm -hmm. And that way, using a variety of media, whether it's perlite or vermiculite, they start to grow. <laughs> and then the cycle just starts all over again. Yep, the cycle of life. <laughs> The results of Alicia's experiments are dazzling. Yeah, I really, really love some of the crystallinum type hybrids because just look at how shiny and mm. as shimmery they are. They're like the name crystallinum. And I love some of the Forgetio hybrids that we've made. You know, this was one of my first uh, Forgetio hybrids. And you can see that it's kind of got that really bumpy, topographical yeah. earth texture happening. Yeah, just... lots of little valleys and hills and more mountains, really. Because we make quite a number of hybrid batches, we try to track their progress and we identify them with names for each batch. We assigned a batch ID hashtag to this one called Dark Bullet. The reason is at the time we anticipated this would be very dark. And also the feature of that bumpy texture, the botanical term is bullate. So it's a pun, you know, dark and bullate, <laughs> dark bullet. <laughs> People who bought these as seeds from us have been using that hashtag to share their growth and track their progress and sending us updates on how it's going. Here we've also got another Forgetty Eye hybrid we made. Batch ID, hashtag Hungry Uncle. <laughs> what a name! Yeah, it's a little bit of fun that Nige thought up. And people have been resharing their progress pictures online with the variations and how it's growing for them. So far, it seems to be the general feedback is it's a very fast grower. It seems to be super robust, very dominant forgetty eye traits and some of them are having a really cute kind of a red centre nose. We call it the snoot, <laughs> pink snoot. <laughs> it's a great feedback system. A sort of a crowdsourcing scientific data in a, in a new, new modern way, <laughs> I suppose. This all started with a love of plants. Is that still the case? Oh, absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. We live for this. What is it 
that you love with hydroponics? Why grow your plants in hydroponics? It's so much of it's the automation and the ease of growing things, but I do enjoy the technical building side of it as well. Would you say the same, Alicia? Well, I just love the foundation I just created. It's kind of creating the paint and I can then paint with it, abstract art style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I'm the engine, she steers the ship. It's a good partnership. <laughs> There really are so many new and different ways to grow plants. If you've caught the indoor plant bug, be careful where it might take you. You might just need to quit your day job.